Hello guys, welcome back. Uh, I know it's been a while. It's probably been about two months. And I really apologize. My computer got broken. And then to make matters worse, uh, my mic got broken as well. So I fixed my computer. I'm currently borrowing a friend's mic, but I'm going to try to buy a mic as soon as possible. Uh, but anyways, I'm coming back with another video. So anyways, uh, I got a comment which said, why were you using version 4.7? And the honest answer to that is, I don't really know. Uh, I've had better experience with older versions of Unreal Engine. It seems like whenever I use the latest version, I just get a bunch of really stupid crashes and things like that. But anyways, I've decided to, um, you know, stay true to my word. I will be using the new uh, latest version of the Unreal Engine. So this is 4.10.2. And we're going to make a new C++ first person project. I'm going to call mine Sprint. So in this tutorial, we're going to be taking the first person controller and we're going to be adding Sprint functionality to the first person controller. So what that means is we can hold left shift and it will make the first person controller sprint and move fast. And this is just kind of showing you a little bit about input components, characters, uh, things like that. So uh, here we go. We're loading up uh, our project, and here we go. The editor is open. Uh, so the first thing I'll do is click uh, show or hide the sources panel, and I'll click C++ classes, go into Sprint, and open up the code for the Sprint character. So now that the Sprint character code is uh, open. Here, and we have uh, set up player input component. So this is where we set up all of our player input stuff. So we're going to add something to this uh, to make our character sprint. So let's start by, uh, we're going to go file, oh sorry, edit, project settings, uh, input, action mappings, click plus, and then we're going to add sprint. And that is going to be the left shift. Once you've done that, you can literally just click out of this. And now we're going to open up the editor. Okay, uh, before we add anything to set up player input component, I'm going to come into the header file here. Whoops. Uh, and we'll add some functions. So. Handles player sprinting begin and end void begin sprint and void end sprint and then we'll make a, a bool uh, b is sprinting and by default we are not sprinting so that is going to be equal to false. Let's go into the setup player input component and we'll set it up. So input component bind action sprint. When we press the left shift, begin sprinting. Pass this. Um, a sprint character begin sprint. There we go. And then we'll just do the same, but when we let go of the left shift, we're going to end sprint. So there you guys go, that's uh, everything mapped. Now we just need to implement these two functions. So we'll come down here, void a sprint character, begin sprint. and end sprint and I'm going to import engine.h so that I can print runtime messages to myself in the game so engine.h so b is sprinting equals true 
and on int sprint, b is sprinting equals false. Pretty easy stuff. And then we're just going to print a message to ourselves. So g engine add on screen debug message. So we'll say, uh, you are sprinting. And then down here, we'll say, you are no longer sprinting. You are no longer sprinting. So, now that we've done all that, let's go ahead and test that out in the editor. So we'll save it and compile and I already know this is going to take like seven years to compile so yeah I'd be back in seven years I guess no seriously I, I actually think it's probably gonna be <laughs> should I should I stop recording yeah now nah, we'll just wait I'll probably probably won't be too bad Let's just hope the compile doesn't fail on us, that would be annoying. And there we go, the compile worked, okay. So if we hit play, and I walk around with my character, if I hold shift, you are sprinting. And if I let go of shift, you are no longer sprinting. So we can tell that our function is working. Now we need to actually make it do something. We need to make the player run faster when it's sprinting and move slower when we're not sprinting, obviously. Let's get our sprint speed. Uh, if we go into here... Uh, just look through these settings, these options we have. Um, okay, we have max walk speed. I'll set that to 1200, and if we play, this is what I want the sprint speed to be. As you can see, nice and fast, right? So this is good, this is a good sprint speed. Uh, let's exit out, and go back into Visual Studio. So, the way that moving works, is it takes the float value for movement, and it adds that to the get actor forward vector, so it moves the actor. We're going to say that by default, that is divided by 2. So by default the player is going to be walking, moving at a walking speed. However, we're going to say that if B is sprinting, for some reason my IntelliSense isn't working, that's annoying. Anyways, uh, value times equals 2. And we'll put that in here as well. So now, if we are sprinting, it's going to times value by 2 and it's just going to return the normal value, which is 1200. Uh, and if we're not sprinting, it's going to divide value by 2, which is going to return 600, which is going to be our walk speed. So now um, we'll go back into the Unreal Editor and compile. And again, probably going to take like four years to compile, but let's just hope I didn't miss any semicolons, please. And hopefully everything works on the first go. Want things to be nice and smooth. There we go. Let's hit play. So by default, we're just walking around nice and slow. If I hit sprint, though, we're now walking fast. So we're now sprinting. And if I let go of left shift, you are no longer sprinting. I'm walking normal. So we've basically implemented sprinting. So we took one of the Unreal um, controllers, the, the first-person controller, and we have now made our own... Uh, functionality in the first-person controller. So we've essentially edited uh, Unreal's first-person component and a lot of people think that the first-person controller um, might be really difficult and intimidating but as you can see it's really not. We've added functionality to the controller pretty easily really. So anyways guys I'll see you in tutorial number seven.